Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Quicksilver, watching a match between Sackdoth and Banana Eye. So let us begin. Sackdoth is starting out at the southwest corner of the map, while Banana Eye is starting out in the north corner of the... Well, north side of the... Uh, northeast corner, I guess. And this is a map with a lot of trees. Gotta be honest, there's actually... I'm actually getting a bit of frame drop as a result of the trees. This is unusual for me. But yes, trees, and many of them, all over this map. So Sackdoth is not going for Reclaim immediately. He is going for Jump Jets, however, getting a puppy right off the bat as Banana Eye goes for light vehicles on this map. That's actually pretty appropriate. This is a fairly flat map, although I'm a bit surprised. Actually, okay, I'm not entirely surprised at the choice here because Sackdoth, as you can see, is quite a bit higher elo than Banana Eye, so Sackdoth probably is handicapping himself a little bit here. By the way, the puppies, I don't believe, can actually use the bushes as reclaim. They're energy reclaim, not metal reclaim. Puppies, I'm pretty sure, need to have metal reclaim to work with. But, no matter, there will eventually be metal reclaim just from there being a lot of dead things. Like the start here. While Banana Eye is focusing... He is getting a lot of... Well, now he's focusing on building up. He's not focusing on reclaiming. Neither player going for energy reclaim, they're going for windmills instead. And given how high the start location is, as you can see here, fairly high off the ground, the windmills are a good idea. Because windmills, their minimum power is dependent on their height. Their maximum power is, I believe, map dependent, or might be mod dependent. It's usually 2.5, but their minimum power is dependent on height, which at this point looks like it's about 2, or a little above, or, nope, never mind, maybe it's more like 1.5. Still, as long as it's above 1, they are more cost-effective than solar plants. And it looks like it's actually below 1. Huh. No, it is 1. Okay, they're just barely... Not quite perfectly cost-effective, but they're still pretty cost-effective. Because solars are double the cost of wind generators and reliably produce 2 power, while wind generators can produce anywhere from, like, I think 0.1 to 2.5. Well, it depends on the height to 2.5. Like I said, the minimum is dependent on the height. Sackdoth trying to scout out, not doing a whole lot of damage to the puppies yet. And he is getting up a pyro, and this is where the jump bot factor gets scary or possibly completely falls on his face. Usually really scary, though. Granted, Banana Eye is playing vehicles. He's got a few slashers up. He's not playing cloaky bots, and cloaky bots, I find, is typically the one that's scarier to fight pyros with. Slashers have the range. They can deal with the fact that the pyros are jumping around because you have homing missiles. So I think that Banana is going to actually have a fairly easy time dealing with this. Easier than using Cloaky Bots at any rate. And this dart will spot out that Pyro or... No, it won't! Banana does not know about this Pyro coming in. The Pyro has just jumped off the... Let's see, Banana, does he have radar? Banana does not have radar. No, he does have radar, but it's not quite able to see the Pyro yet. This dart, unable to spot that Pyro, but another Pyro is being built, so we probably suspect it once he sees it. And he has just barely seen that Pyro. Will Banana know it's coming? Hard to say, but he does have his Slasher set up in a nice defensive position. And another slasher coming down as well, so I think I think that Banana will have a fairly easy time dealing with this. He should be fine, but we'll see. This pyro is coming up. It is in a good position as well. Sackdoth getting right around these slashers, but the slashers are positioning themselves just so they can deal with it. And now it comes in, and that pyro is actually taking a lot of damage. And I was right. It is actually easier to deal with it with vehicles than it is with cloaky bots. At least attack. with slashers than it is with, say, warriors or especially glaives. Because those things just die. And Pyros are really powerful units, but... Slashers have enough health that it's not the biggest deal. And as we can see, even one of them got about half health. They were able to take out that Pyro, no problem. So, more Pyros are forthcoming. Sackdoth might be able to deal with the numbers. And getting some Constructors as well. Let's see if he's just going for Constructors and Jax. So, Jax... That could be interesting. Melee unit. Jump right in. Start banging the Slashers with the Pike. They do have a lot of health, so they probably will be able to deal a fair amount of damage with that. Like, we'll be able to last long enough to deal a fair amount of damage. This Mason, however, is getting attacked by the Pyro. That is harder to deal with. The Mason, however, does have quite a bit of health. It can... It can't get out. It's... It is not focused on getting out. Unit. Banana is not looking at that right now. He is getting some Scorchers in here, but that won't help too much. The Jumpers... As you can see, jump! Pyros can jump, and Pyros are jumping right into Banana's base. They will be able to take out... Well, they might be able to deal a fair amount of damage to the factor. They're going to take out a lot of the economy. Going for the factory directly, though, and this factory, at, it's at 60% health already. The defender trying to get rid of this, but Dominatrix also coming up. 
pretty quick dominatrix. Only not even five minutes in, and a dominatrix has already been built. Granted, he was going slashes, and slashes to dominatrix is not uncommon, but this vehicle factory is down! And the pyro is about to be taken over. One pyro taken over by banana, so banana does have a bit of compensation. Not much. A little bit of compensation, however, pyros cannot set each other on fire, so... Damage each other, yes. Set each other on fire, no. And the dominatrix is on fire, but has taken over the other pyro, so both pyros are now belonging to banana. And it looks like he is going to be going for maybe a counterattack? He needs to rebuild the factory. That's definitely for certain. He is getting another a life eagle factory right in the center of the map. And Banana right now does have a little under half of the or a little over half the economy of Sackdoth. Sackdoth having 17 metal income and Banana having 10. Sackdoth does have this jack in here, and that is his only jack right now. He has been building that for the last several minutes. For the last minute or so. Sorry, it feels like more time. This game does feel like it it packs a lot of stuff into a short period of time. It's hard to sometimes tell what time it is. Sackdoth now at this point at the six minute mark, morphing his commander a little bit later than you'd expect. Banana has not morphed his commander yet at all. Both players relied entirely on infrastructure. And the Pyro is coming back in, taking revenge on their producers with the Jack in play. However, that might be a little bit tricky. This Jack can start to deal with them. However, Banana doing a great job counter harassing with Sackdoth's old units. This laser turret might be a problem. And a puppy able to get rid of one of the pyros. The other pyro is doing what it can, but the jack is coming in. This factory will not go down that quickly. Not that easily, but it is at half health. Is it half health? It is on fire. It is still producing just fine, but that pyro managed to deal a fair amount of damage. At this point, Sackdoth and Banana have about even economy. Sackdoth able to, well, losing his economy. Banana mostly by reclaim, but he has started to rebuild. And getting another Dominatrix, although, admittedly, against Jump Pots, you don't need that many. Jump Pot doesn't build a lot of individual units, other than puppies. But the other units are so expensive that you're not going to see that many of them. So we might just be getting a couple Dominatrices, just to make sure that in case a couple, two or three Pyros come in, then you can actually take them all out at once. And double-checking, seeing that Sackdoth does have an expansion over in the center of the map. And Banana has not gone for the counter expansion up here. And he's also not going for the north at all. He is entirely focused on building up the center as he was before. And Sackdoth, on the other hand, is focused on expansion. Has actually gotten the entire south, which is where Sackdoth's all of his economy is coming from. Is the fact that he has the entire south side. And this Jack coming in here, getting damaged and taken over. It needs to run away, and it is doing so at half health and a third taken over. Dominatrix is giving chase, but not for long. That's good, because that would have been extremely dangerous if they had. So, at this point, Banana is still behind an economy compared to Sackdoth. Sackdoth doesn't have a whole lot pushing in here. He has a lot of metal in store. He doesn't have a whole lot of production, or a lot of build power being pushed into this factory. A Freaker is being built, which will probably be either used to add build power, or if not, then be used to simply add his, well, add a Caretaker. And from this hill, it looks like there will be a bunch of jumping going on. So he's likely to jump down from this hill onto everything here. The puppies, I think, cannot jump. No, puppies cannot jump. But the Jack and Pyro coming in on a bit of a flank while the puppies are dealing with the slashers. Two of the slashers have gone down, and the Dominator is doing what they can to try to take care of that Pyro, but not quite enough. And that Pyro is dead. Pyro and Jack are dead at the cost of two slashers and one Dominatrix. So Banana, I'd say, is still kind of ahead militarily. Economically, obviously, behind, and this Freaker is pushing build power into the Jump Jet Factory, so it's going to just be harder and harder to be dealt with for Banana. Banana needs to get up more economy. He is getting more economy, and that's good. He's catching up. However, Sackdoth is not really falling behind too much. It looks like he hasn't rebuilt his main base, but he has gotten other metal extractors to the east and southeast, and that is doing a good job. So that is going to help out here. And that is going to be pretty useful there. Banana moving in with the slashes to the main base. Looks like he is trying to finish things off. Getting a metal extractor. <laughs> kind of clever there. Using a domination to grab one of Sakta's vulnerable metal extractors. While Pyro's take out some of his own. So Banana losing metal extractors. The Pyro has cornered this Mason. That Mason is very dead. Dominator is going to try to save it. It won't be there in time. While the slashes come in. Getting rid of the laser tower and... Getting rid of the Pyro as well, losing two slashes once again in the process. No, never mind, the Dominatrix has taken over the Pyro, and the Pyro going to help out Banana's cause. 
It has rebelled against God. It has gone over to Banana Side and actually has gotten killed by its own allies. So never mind then. <laughs> Looks like Banana's slashes were not the most careful. They did not trust that pyro and decided to simply frag it instead of letting it do anything else. While the jump jet factory has been taken over, Banana has grabbed that and it looks like Sackdoth needs to build another factory or get rid of this dominatrix, but I don't see how he's going to do that killing too quickly. Banana grabbing more and more of Sackdoth's economy with that dominatrix. My goodness, that is working out. One dominatrix is doing quite a lot of work here, and another one has taken over the pyro that actually did not manage to kill the mason. The dominatrix saved that mason, got there in time, and Sackdoth building a gunship plant to try to make up for this Pushing in 15 metal in there, that should be done within, well, as you can see, about 20 seconds right now. And this pyro is trying to come in, and it is able to come in, getting rid of the defenders before they... Is he going to get rid of them before they reload? One of them has reloaded, it's almost reloaded, and it has reloaded, but not quite in time. You can tell by the green dots at the top, I should have pointed that out, sorry. But yeah, as you can see here, there are green dots on the defender, and if those are lit up as green, it can fire, if they're red, it cannot. That's how many missiles it has. Takes three, and then has to reload. But now, Sackdoth does have a gunship factory up. He has a Banshee built up. He's continuing to build up from there, but it looks like, at this point, Banana is just going to be able to flood in more units, a lot of Sackdoth's units. He has not, He started to use the Jumpjet Factory 2, getting a jack from there as well. Nicely done. No other units, however, have been built for Banana. No other jump bots have been built. He simply has the power that he captured from before. And these Slashers are coming in. Getting in a position, one of them going down, but it doesn't matter. The rest of them are going to be able to take out everything else in here. Another gone down, and the Pyro moving in under the cover of that Slasher. As the Dominatrix takes the hit of the Stinger instead of the Pyro, but the Pyro still goes down. Once again, looks like friendly fire, which, as I have mentioned before, is not friendly. It's really a misnomer, honestly. And there goes another one. Okay, that was, that was an excuse. The missiles are already aimed at that Banshee, but yeah. Friendly fire. Not as friendly as it sounds. Really a misnomer. And it looks like the Banshees have gotten revenge, getting rid of the jump jet plant. And this Jack Hover has been built in the meantime. Moving down to deal with Sackdoth's new factory. It actually will... It's only at half health right now. The Banshees aren't hitting it that quickly. And getting rid of one of the metal extractors, getting rid of everything it can. But not quite that much. Only one metal extractor, ultimately. Banana still getting more caretakers, getting himself far more... Well, he's got a lot more production. He's got... One and a half times the economy is Sackdoth right now. While Sackdoth has taken back these metal extractors, he's still lost a lot of ground. And Banana continuing to rebuild a lot of Slashers, getting Impalers as well. Slashers, Impalers, and Dominatrices. Very, very indirect fire focused, but has been working so far. Okay, admittedly, Slashers are pretty direct fire, but you have to pause first, so you can't easily... You can't just rush in with them. You have to be very mindful about where you are. And as you can see, also... Expect some losses. They're gonna happen. Sackdoth trying to get with his commander. His commander level two. Nanolith focus commander, as Sackdoth is prone to do. Getting rid of the stinger. For, okay, the slashers are mostly going down. However, the slashers are doing a great job dealing with the defenses around here. And it looks like a back and forth is being built up. Some impalers as well coming in. And this banshee trying to do what it can, but the defender scaring it away. However, all those slashers are dead. Banana has lost all those slashers. Not able to get rid of Sackdoth's commander. Sackdoth's commander is morphing once again. Probably more nanolades knowing him. You knowing his comments on the subject, he was very much adamant about nanolades are the thing you get when you morph. You morph to nanolades. And I can totally see why. Because the idea, you know, you have excess metal, you turn it into excess build power. Impaler doing what it can, getting actually, wow, nice shot there. Getting rid of Laser Tower, getting rid of a Lotus that was off to the side. Probably gonna get rid of the Metal Extractor next, and there it goes. That Metal Extractor is down. Sackdoth losing once again another Metal Extractor, and Banana is pushing in a lot of build power here very nicely, getting another half dozen Slashers, while at the same time, Banshees are being built up. There are a total of eight Banshees so far on the map, and most of them are in front of us right now, the last one just being built already being built on the pad right now, but Sackdoth, his commander's once again nearly morphed up while moving in around the side to harass with Banana, building up a Razor's Kiss. Not quite in time, however, the laser turret might be able to do something here. It's going to try, that's for sure, but not able to do too much. These Banshees should be able to kill it before any more of the number go down. 
And that is exactly what happens. However, this Razor's Kiss, not gonna be up in time. This Mason building too slowly. And Banana's entire economy focused on the light vehicle factor here, getting some crashes to deal with the Banshees. And Impalers to deal with everything else. I think you can actually rush in right now and attack, get rid of this gunship plant. And Sakdot's commander, more Nanolays, but he does have some drones to attack with. So not quite entirely Nanolays focus. However, the Slashers, a couple of them going for the drone, the rest of them going for the gunship plant as they are going to be able to take care of it, no problem. It looks like some of them are getting distracted by the drones, and once again, all the... Well, except for the one that's being blocked off, this one here blocked off by Stinger Wreckage. That is a small problem, but... Wait, what the... Are these having a hold fire? Nope, they are not in a hold fire. I'm not sure why they aren't shooting. That is most bizarre. They must be on weight or something. Okay, well, for whatever reason, they were not firing. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Possibly waiting for the Dominators to come in. No, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. They're waiting for the Dominators to come in and to take on the gunship plant. So they are not going for it, and the Impaler are about to kill it. This Dominatrix, is it going to go for it? It looks like it's trying, but that Impaler will finish it off it, right as it's taken over to... Well, right before it's taken over, actually. So Saktoth building another light vehicle factory, or not another one. He's That's his first light vehicle factory. Switching factories once again, and he has lost almost all his Banshees. He has four Banshees left. All of his jumpers are gone. It's been a lot of fact switching for Saktoth. But I think this is going to be the last one. He is being pushed into a corner. The southeast corner to be precise. And that will probably do him in. As far as I can tell, yeah, he's getting hit very hard. These Ravagers coming in. First time we see Ravagers actually from Banana. He's switching over to a bit more direct combat. And against light vehicles, not a bad idea. But still, the Slashers were doing a great job. But I can see why he's going for the Ravagers. At the very least, they are good tanks. Scorcher's coming up from Sakdoth to try to raid out, try to get rid of these Slashers without them being able to fight back too much. But with half a dozen Slashers, that's rather difficult to pull off effectively. And they are being distracted by the Stinger, however, and the Scorcher's doing what it can. Able to get rid of one of them, possibly two. And that Stinger will be going down, but these Slashers are not doing so hot. And no, actually, the Stinger not going down. The last Slasher distracted by the Scorcher and the Stinger... Still goes down, however, that did not last. So just barely, Banana able to get rid of that Stinger. And at this point, there's not a whole lot defending the Southeast right now. And the Banshees have gone down as well, so... At this point, looks like Banana's just scouring the land, making sure the Sackdoth has not expanded anywhere else. And once he has figured that out for sure, that is going to be... Okay, I apologize that the Twitch stream is not running quickly. I don't know. I think that's Twitch's server's problem. I've done everything I can to make it run as quickly as possible. Well, three megabits. That's about the lowest I'm going to go for quality. But I apologize if it's not if it's hard to watch. But that's... Unfortunately, it seems to be an issue with Twitch. I don't know why. It's really annoying. I keep getting complaints about that. I don't know what I can do about it because, honestly, the bitrate can't be lowered anymore without affecting quality massively. So anyway, back to the game. Banana is, I think he's done scouring at this point. He's got to go in for the kill. He's He can win right now. This is his game. Well, it's his game to lose if he's not careful. Sakdoth is pushing back up. He is getting some Ravagers in here, as does Banana have. But Banana has twice the economy. He is pushing all that economy into, well, a lot of the economy into the factory. But it looks like in total he's only pushing about 10 or so metal in here. Possibly less, actually. The factory itself is only using about 4. Yeah, it looks like a little over 12 metal is being pushed in here. More extractors being produced to deal with the harassment that was being done. And this Impaler going down as well to the Ravagers. Sackdoth just trying to get rid of all the forces coming in and harassing him from afar. This Dominatrix can do some... Well, can help a bit getting rid of some of these Ravagers, but at this point... Banana can just build anything that Sackdoth can. There's nothing that Sackdoth has that's particularly unique to him right now. And seeing as the economy disparity is there, I, I'm a bit surprised that... Well, actually, not surprised at all. Banana is pushing for more metal extractors. Sackdoth, he does have Reclaim, and he's using that as best he can. And getting more metal extractors as well. That Reclaim is definitely keeping him even with Banana, economically speaking. So Banana and Sackdoth 
it's going to come down a lot to micromanagement. It's going to come down to positioning. Actually, maybe not micromanagement, but definitely positioning. That's going to be very important. Banana Stalls and Morphous Commander, by the way. But positioning is going to be very important right now. And this commander is going to go down unless this, these Scorchers need to be able to save it. And the Scorchers are going to be... Are they going to be able to save it? No! They do not save it. Killing the Ravager right after the commander goes down. However, clearly, Banano did not care that much about his commander. Still, these Ravagers doing a very good job. Banana does have a lot of his own. Half dozen of his own coming in from the northwest. Going down to the southeast. And that will be much more effective than one or two Slashers. Though, these Scorchers are doing a good job harassing. Getting rid of the Freaker. That Freaker actually still alive? Wow, okay. At any rate, able to get rid of the expansion that the Freaker had just built up. So, Banana able to deal with Sackdoth's new expansion. And Sackdoth is going to be attacked once again by more and more Ravagers, as well as Scorchers coming in here from the side. Flanked by Scorchers with Ravagers on the south side. Scorchers behind them, and Sackdoth's Ravagers are actually doing a pretty good job staying alive. In fact, doing a nice job weaving around while Sackdoth, his commander, doing a good job of the Heat Ray. Getting well, heat rain beam lasers, getting rid of those ravagers, and actually pushing them back quite a ways. So, like I said, Banana does have double the economy of Sackdoth, and he does have the production capacity. He does have two caretakers pushing this factory. That's definitely very powerful. However, it is going to be difficult to work with because, well, as you can see, it's still a question of how the combat works. But it looks like Sackdoth's commander actually taking a lot of damage, but. Sackdoth does have a Faraday up. That Faraday not able to do too much. However, it is able to help out. And once again, Sackdoth... No, never mind. Not once again. Sackdoth actually is going... He is falling back. He is losing a fair amount of his Ravagers. And more Ravagers are coming in here. Actually, mostly Scorchers, come to think of it. Some Ravagers as well, but... A lot of Scorchers. There goes Sackdoth's commander. Gone down, and... That was a lot of his build power right there. As well as some of his energy. It looks like he does have... Well, he has 17 metal coming in from Reclaim, but that Reclaim is only going to last so long. Mason's doing what they can, reclaiming the commander, but the Scorchers are going to come in and finish that off, and that is rather unfortunate. It looks like Sackdust forgot to send a rally point over to the battle for these levelers, so the levelers were out of position, able to get rid of most of the Scorchers coming in, actually, but still out of position, not able to win that battle, and it would appear that Banana is just about to take on this factory again, but... No, not quite. In fact, the factory is... No, never mind. The factory is at 3% health. But... It doesn't matter. It was close. And the Ravager, not quite able to get it. The Leveler blocks the shot for the factory. Takes a bullet for the team. Or tank... Sh or plasma shell for the team. And a Dominatrix coming up. Sackdoth... I'm in very enthusiastic to see what will happen, but I don't think he's going to be able to turn this around. I'd be very surprised if he did. But this Dominatrix... While useful, is going to be coming up against yet another Dominatrix, and losing a leveler to that Dominatrix. One of his levelers is down. Well, all of his levelers are down, actually. They're gone now, and one of them is belonging to Banana Eye. So, Banana is looking to go for the kill right now. The factory is not being repaired. Actually, 3% health still. So, only a couple shots, and it'll be gone down. And the Dominatrix has two seconds left, and it's going to be able to get out, but the factory is gone down, has gone down as well. And... The Dominatrix on reload, going down to a Scorcher, and I think that is game. There we go, that is game. Sackdoth about to surrender, and there it goes. Everything blows up, and Banana has won the match. Very, very hard won fight, but nicely done, Banana. So I hope you enjoyed that, and let's see, what time is it? It's 2.30. I think... I think that's going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you for watching, everybody.